happened. All right, I'm doing it. Let's do it. Okay. Ready? Ready, Freddie. <laughs> All right. Uh, hi, I am Cole Walser. I am the host and one of the judges on Exposure. Hey, y'all. I'm Kat Jimenez. I'm the head judge on Exposure. And today we are doing Hulu's rapid fire questions. So let's get started. Cole, if you could hop in a time machine, where would you go? Oh, that is a great question. And I would definitely go to the Jurassic period. I got to see the dinosaurs. <laughs> Either that or like sort of medieval times, because that just seems crazy. But I'm going I think with medieval dinosaurs. too. You'd go to medieval? I just want to eat those chicken wings like rah, rah. <laughs> Like you'll definitely just get, sh well, stabbed probably or killed after. So maybe, well, but you get eaten by dinosaur back then anyway. So you're going to I think it's fine. I'm going medieval. I'm going okay. Medieval. I'm going Jurassic period. Okay. <laughs> I had that question on my thing too. <laughs> Um, all right, Kat, it is your last day on earth. How are you spending it? Ooh, okay. Definitely got to spend it with my kid, my five-year-old, because um, I just want to play with her, hug, hug on her, and then maybe go to the park. Super easy, super simple. You? Well, actually, it's a it's a funny it's a funny question because you remember when the Mayan calendar predicted the end of the world, like in 2012. Yes. So me and my two buddies went out. We went out to like a bar and had some drinks, or whatever. And the whole theme was like it was the world is going to end. So we were like, oh, like let's just do the, let's just do our last night on Earth thing. And we decided that the best thing to do was to go to McDonald's and eat <laughs> Big Macs, which is a Big great Max. way to end to end the yes. uh, all days. Uh, small fries or large fries? Oh, super size everything in a Big Mac, of course. Yes. You could go all out. Your last day yeah. on earth, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm into that. I definitely would miss those French fries for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, cool. What could what keeps you up at night? Oh, um, everything. <laughs> I think that I have trouble sleeping, um, okay. and it, my mind is like always going. So it's literally a list of the most random things ever. Uh, sometimes it's work, sometimes it's personal. Sometimes I'm just wondering about the quirks of the universe and I can't yeah. relax and go to bed. So I'm gonna say the answer is everything. everything. All the things, all the things. So the things. my answer until recently was not a damn thing because I have a tendency to overwork and like over accept projects and overdo all the damn time. So recently, the only thing that kept me up at night was the full pink moon. I literally popped up in the middle of the night on the full pink moon and was just up randomly for two nights straight. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And then I talked to other people and they said it was the full pink moon last month. So oh, wow. But I'm going wait, to how do you how do you manage being super busy and taking on a million projects and then not having that run through your mind at night? Cause tell because tell me, I'm tell me literally more. so tired that I fall out every single night. <laughs> maybe I'm just not working hard enough. Maybe I mean, it thing. could be a thing. You should ask yourself. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. Yeah, my question was that your question. Um, that was you. That's my question. That was um, no. I thought that was my okay. question. You could say up. A, oh, no, that was no. Your question. Whose question was that? That was your question. That was so question. I'm gonna go next. Who is your ultimate dinner party guest, dead or alive? Oh, the alt my ultimate dinner party guest. I read that and I thought about it, and I can't remember what the other one was, but one was George Washington. Okay. And I don't really know why, <laughs> other than just to like go back and be like, so what are you thinking as you're starting this whole thing? Like, just tell me what's going through your mind. Right, you know I mean? right. Just to be like, just, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to start a country. I kind of want to know what I have to do with that guy and yep. see, see what bad. it's like. Other than that, uh, I mean, like Julius Caesar, like, <laughs> what's going on in your mind? <laughs> tell me about what, tell me about how you approach life. Um, wow. Yeah, those, those would be ones for you're me. Oh, you're so old school because my ultimate dinner party guest is like Barack Obama. So we're on the same page. But you just want the origin story while yeah, I'm you're like, the <laughs> you're going origin story. I'm going like, give me your POV on being the first X, Y, Z. Hello. 
black yeah. president, yeah. first black yeah. person. So I mean, definitely that would be a good dinner for sure. Yep. I would just go way back. <laughs> you you way went back. way back. <laughs> um, all right, get a little get a little serious here. How is your life different today than what you thought or imagined as a teenager? Oh wow, that's good. Okay, so as a teenager, I thought I'd be a photographer, so I kind of did that. Um, did not think I was going to be a host on a TV show, so that's different. You? Yeah, that is that is definitely very different. I mean, I think that I mean I grew up in Canada where Hollywood was like a distant dream, though I think it entered my brain early, but I don't know about teenager. Actually, during my teens, I skateboarded. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna skateboard for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, then I went to college, then I was like, oh yeah, like jobs and money and thing. But then but then the second thought after jobs and money and thing and things was oh, I can make films for jobs and money and things. Totally. And that pivoted my entire career and led me here. Uh, I did not think I would be a host of a TV show, of a streaming show. Do we call I, it TV shows? I mean, streaming, streaming television. That I, wasn't let me even... start that over. I did not think I would be the host of a show, which I'm very excited about, but not really expecting that as a teenager. That's good. That's like a nice tidy sound bite, by the way. So, you know, mine was like, mine was like long winded, but, and I said, TV show, do you think I should redo that? Uh, I mean, it's, I don't know. I just don't know. You know what I mean? It's yeah. on TV, you know, I, yeah, I that's think true. It, it's I streaming. Know. It's a streaming channel. I think it's almost, I don't know. I think it's fine. Okay. I'm so just going to cut mean, that. You, it, you, you just cut that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's your hero? Current? Who is your hero? Who, who is my hero? <laughs> Taika Waititi. Waititi. Taika Waititi. He's a director. You know who he is? No. Uh, so he directed uh, Jojo Rabbit. Uh, uh, um, uh, what did what we do in the shadows? What they do in the shadows? What we do in the shadows? Let me let me let okay. me not butcher this man's work. Okay. Um, and also, let me say his name properly. He's a, um, a well, I'll just, I'll explain it. Okay. 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 And I will explain why he's my hero. Yeah, what we do in the shadows. See, I'm not an idiot. You got this. Um, Okay, so my hero is Taika Waititi because he's a director um, and because like, A, he's super creative and I love the style of work. Like he did, uh, directed Jojo Rabbit, What We Do in the Shadows. Um, what is it called? Uh, 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 Hunt for the Wilder People. He's just a New Zealand director, but also like a charismatic performer. So did you see Jojo Rabbit? No, no. It's fine if you did it. I suggest watching it. <laughs> but uh, he plays Hitler and he's just an amazing performer, like a funny Hitler, okay. uh, an amazing performer. And so I love the style and tone of in what he creates, but also his ability to perform. And because uh, that's sort of like where I want to take my career. So Taika is currently my hero. I love that. So, so you have multiple heroes, basically, it sounds like. Yeah, I think it changes. Of yeah. course. Yeah, because I think that you change, right? Like, Sure. You, I think your goals change. I mean, my, mine definitely do. My, like, it wasn't always uh, in front of the camera, it was never really a goal. But now that I'm doing it more, I want to do more of it. So I'm like, sure. incorporating that into my vision. And then so different heroes align better with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Um, what about you? Okay. Mm. All right. I got to go too. Got to always pay homage to the ancestors. So mom is my hero because obviously I wouldn't be here without her. Uh, but then if I was gonna kind of like bring it to the forefront, I would say a photographer that I love and consider my hero is Carrie Mae Weems. Um, first black photographer that I saw on uh, doing self portraits in the, I feel like 70s and 80s. Um, and 
just really courageous, courageous storyteller. And, and so to me, she's a real vanguard in photography. Um, and I consider her one of my heroes. Oh, amazing. Carrie uh, Mae Weems. Love it. Uh, I hope I got that fact right. Now I have to go back and make sure that this body of work, because uh -huh. <laughs> I might need self-portraits. Self-portraits. When did she make these? I feel like I was looking at them and I mean, the, you uh, give a pretty broad uh yeah, window. 70s and 80s. 70s. I did, I did, I did. So as long as it was not like 97, you're probably pretty good. Right. Yeah, it felt like it was in the 80s to me. So hold on. Now I'm looking. Now I'm really looking. Wow, I'm on her timeline. 1990, Cole. Whoa. Okay, that's when she started. Well, no, this specific projects, but I think she was doing some self portraits in the seventies and eighties. So I'm okay Nobody, with it. Yeah. I'm okay with it. All right, you go. They might, they might fact, fact check that one and then cut it. So keep, uh, if keep you it had, <laughs> if, if you had one extra hour in the day, mm. what would you do with it? Ooh. Okay. Currently, uh, I probably try to get a little bit more yoga on or exercise or kundalini yoga or i'd cook a bit more um i feel like cooking is a happy place for me but it's it kind of slides you know down the day as a priority as i'm kind of tackling work stuff so i'm um, cooking it would be cooking or yoga what you got Cooking's a good answer actually like i would love an hour where i'm not allowed to do anything but cook because i yeah. enjoy it but then it's like, like it always gets pushed and it's like, I'll end up just eating up something or ordering something. Exactly. But I do like the process. Like it's, it's fun to create meals. It's good to eat what you make, but I don't, I don't make time for it. Yeah. So having one hour where it's like the person in charge of my life is telling me we can only <laughs> spend this hour on cooking. That would be awesome. But I would say uh, in relation to my previous answer about sleep, if I could get an hour of sleep extra, of like dedicated, nice, deep or REM sleep. Mm. I would take it. That's cute. That's cute. That's like, that's, that's a good answer too. Cause I could always use more sleep too. It's important. You yeah. see all these sleep studies coming out. It's like it's that's kind of the way to stay healthy. It's the fuel for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to elongate your life if you get good rest. So it will. All right. Um, like those telomeres. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Paul, you don't look like you don't get sleep. So, oh, well, thank you. I'm Boom. trying. I'm out here trying. <laughs> All right. Um, what's your personal motto? Um, work hard and be nice to people. That's nice. That's it, I think that's nice. Think. Yeah. Um, well, you know, we have that uh, Asian gene in us. So we have like the excellent worth ethic situation. At least my mother and father instilled that in me. Um, I would say if I had a motto, which is like a hashtag, yeah. I would say lead with love in everything I do. Yeah, it's good. It's that broad. Will, that will lead you in the right direction. It's broad. It's broad. It's all it's broad, but you need to, you need to, if you, if a motto needs to apply to every situation right that you're in. that's right like if i'm if i'm alone by myself in a forest how am i working hard and being nice people maybe mine's not broad enough <laughs> that's well you could be nice to all of the animals that you meet um yeah i, I guess i would i would, I would uh, well also i'm a person i could be nice i could show myself grace and understanding in this that's right that's forest. right so that's maybe right. <laughs> All right, right. Um, let's see. Are we, should, I mean, how long did they want us to go for? I feel like we've been going for a hot second. 10 to 15. Questions or minutes? Minutes. Oh, actually, I feel like they wanted us to go for just five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. I thought it was like, short. all right. So then do you want to, do you want to do one more and wrap it up? Uh, or you just want to wrap it up? Yes, yeah, let's see. Time machine, that one. I think I might have. I have a good one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, go, go for I it. I mean, tell me if you like this one. If you had a garden and could only grow three things, what would they be? Ooh, if I had a garden and could only grow three things, well, that's a good question. One has to be food of sorts, <laughs> of course. Well, wow, that you're you know, even thinking that, you're, you know. Potatoes, carrots, 
kale. I don't know what the most nutritious food is. I would do research and I would pick the most, the, the food that you could most likely sustain yourself off of. <laughs> the second thing would be something for beauty, like a really, a passion flower. Oh, wow. Those? Oh, those are crazy. So yeah. I would grow yeah. passion flower. Oh, because they also make fruit. So I get a little veggies and a little fruit. That's cute. The okay. third item. Well, I don't, there's a joke to be had on the third item, but I, I, I'm not really going to make that joke. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> this question, it's a dud. <laughs> no, I mean, but that's a good question. But, but good question. I mean, the third thing would to round out my experience would be food, beauty, and then you would grow weed and then you'd be happy. <laughs> that's what you would do. Well, the fact that you're thinking outside of the box that it's not just food that you're growing is intriguing because I would just grow, uh, I would grow um, avocado for the healthy fats. Then I would grow um, manila mangoes for the sweet desserts. Ooh, yeah. And then I would have to grow some sort of garlic or onions so that I could season all the other shit that doesn't taste good um, and make it taste decent. So that's, that's good. Those are the three things I would grow. I'll, I'll add to my answer that for whatever reason, when you ask that question, I imagine that like I'm on a deserted island. <laughs> I, I added that part into the, the parameters. Fair Not enough, just, like, fair enough. You just added a second layer. You were yeah, like, yeah, in yeah, my yeah, mind, yeah. I'm directing this movie. Yeah, and it's passed away. Things. What are you growing on the island? Completely, completely. All right, fair enough. All right, let's outro this bad boy. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, everybody. That what rapid fire questions. All right, everybody, that was rapid fire questions with myself, Cole Walser. And Kat Jimenez, thanks for watching and be sure to check out Exposure on Hulu. You have to do that too. <laughs> thanks for watching and be sure to check out Exposure on Hulu. Bye. Bye everybody. Okay. Nailed I almost, it. I almost hung up. I was like, that's <laughs> not showing any social graces, Kat. <laughs>